Hey, I'm Mike Backrell, and today we're going to explore Joe DiOrio's concept of guitar arpeggios. Let's take a look. So what are guitar arpeggios? Now obviously arpeggios are notes of the chord. So that'd be a C major 7. We're going through every note. C, E, G, B, C, E, G, B, C. Now how is a guitar arpeggio different than that? This is a concept that Joe Diorio briefly touches on in his DVD solo guitar concepts, which I recommend everyone should check out and have in the library. It's a great source of inspiration, a lot of great ideas in there. In the video, Joe talks about having a specific set of guitar arpeggios and not worrying about having every note in them. You know, and he just defines it as arpeggios that lay well on the instrument. And he said every instrument has their own set of arpeggios, so things that lay really well. Now, obviously, we can play through our regular arpeggios like this, but he's talking specifically about using our chords, our chord shapes we already have, and viewing those as arpeggios. So for C major 7, we'll take this voicing that we all know. And we'll just play it just up and down. And that's our quote-unquote guitar arpeggio. It's a shape we already know well that lays well on the instrument, and it's notes of the arpeggio. Now we're skipping some notes. Now, now theory, we're leaving that, that first third, we're leaving out the root. And then we're not going any, any further beyond that, that, that top third. But that's okay. And that actually lends itself really well to some interesting ideas. Because it, rather than just being all built in thirds, like the arpeggio typically is, we have some leaps in there. We have a fifth, a third, and a fourth. I mean, we, we could throw that fifth on top again and have another third on top. But these are things that we already know well, and and we can easily visualize, because as long as, as long as we can see our chord, for whatever chord we're playing, so we're playing D minor 7, G7, G7 altered, C major 7. And these are all these are all drop two voicings, and we are legitimately just playing the voicing. So we can see how instantly useful this would be if we're playing over an F major seven, and we could find an F major seven. We can play the chord, and ornament it any way we want, and we have our own arpeggio to to, to fit over the changes, and it can be any shape of it. Is that F add nine? You know, I can make up my own. And now the cool thing about this is because there's some big jumps in there, it's created some interesting intervallic playing. So to get ourselves familiar with the concept, I created some exercises that we can kind of go through. So this first one, we're just going to go up and down the scale. C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, G7, A minor 7, B minor 7 flat 5, back up to C major 7. And so we're going to do it like this. And all I'm doing is I'm just playing each note of the chord. Now you notice my, my fingering changes a little bit. Now rather than fingering it exactly like the chord, I'm trying to make it what's easiest for me to get through this exercise. But I could go with it. You could do the exact finger you do for the chords to make it even easier on yourself. It's really whatever is going to work for you. And so I, re I recommend experimenting with a couple fingerings. But all we're doing is just going up and down. And you can also, I'm, I'm sweet picking it. You could alternate pick. Now, those are all root position. Now, we could explore this with our inversions, too. And this is where we start to get some really interesting sounds. So this is our first inversion of a C major 7. We have E, B, C, and G. That, in and of itself, is a really interesting sound, because there's a lot of wide intervals. So we have C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, G7, and so forth. You can go up and down the neck. Let's do that with a third inversion. So here we, here we have G, C, E, B. So this is our second inversion. We just gotta go up and down C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, 
G7, and so forth. We can go up and down and, and explore that. We can explore this with any inversion and any chord shape, and I and I recommend anything you can think of. In in <clears throat> in the solo guitar video, Joe explores some really interesting chord voicings. You know, some really wide intervals, some crazy, you know, big big finger stretch things, and he gets some really interesting lines out of it. And the thing that makes it so great is that if we can see our chord, we now have this unique arpeggio for it without having to learn a separate thing. So as a bonus, I created a little line here. Now this line is a 2-5-1 going to C major. So we have D minor 7, G7, C major 7. Now what I'm doing for this, I'm using this voicing. It's regular drop 2 voicing, D minor. And then I'm doing an A flat minor major 7 for the G7. Because the A flat melodic minor is the, the G altered scale. So I'm playing A flat minor major 7. And then I'm jumping to a... A, a G7 sharp 9, the kind of like the G Hendrix chord. And I'm landing on the second inversion of a C major 7. So voicings. And so here's the line. One more time. So I'm playing up the D minor 7, D, A, C, F, and, and, and I'm playing on top here, notes from the arpeggio, A and C, and I'm pulling off to this B here, G, E flat, A flat, so just right up this shape, and I'm just going G, B, F, B flat, right up that, that G Hendrix chord. And I'm playing down the second version, C major 7. So we've got B, E, C, G. And then I'm just jumping down to the root again. So I hope you take that and run with it. Explore this on every string set, any any chord shape you can think of. Because it's all there for you. If, if you can picture it while you're comping, you can picture it while you're improvising. And that is a cool thing in and of itself, and it inherently just gives you all these interesting wide intervals. So I hope you enjoy the lesson. Keep practicing. See you next time.